Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This video is part two of a two part series on some if and some ifs. In order to get as much out of this video as you can, I would highly recommend watching my first video called Some If Excel Tutorial before watching this one. I've linked it in the card at the top of this video. I've also added a link in the description below. In that video, I gave you the basics of how the sum if formula works in Excel. If you already know how the sum if function works and you just need to learn how sum ifs works, you are in the right spot. So let's dig right in. Alright, let's learn how to work smarter and not harder. If you remember my previous video, Sum If Excel Tutorial, you remember that I used the Sum If formula to make a single page automated scorecard for my team of phone agents that does a few things. Number one, it's automated and only shows one phone agent at a time and their phone metrics, which are called duration, hold time per call, after call per call, and calls per hour. Number two, the values change based on what agent I select from the drop-down list. Number three, the color in the cell changes either red or green based on whether the agent selected is meeting the goal or not. This video will take that one step further. The sum if formula only allows you to sum values based on one criteria. I want to be able to not only sum these values based on the name of the agent, but also based on the different months in the year. By doing that, I can see if the agents are making month-to-month -month improvements. That's where the sum ifs formula comes into play. I've set up a new template that has the agent's name and the months of the year. I've added the goals in seconds for call duration, hold time, and after call, and a goal of 11 calls per hour. Now I need to set up the sum ifs formulas. Let's take a look at the raw data we need to clean up first. I'm using the same data I used in my sum if tutorial, but instead of only looking at one month, it looks at all 12 months worth of data. I've color formatted this table so that it's easy as possible to read. The ranges that we'll be using for criteria are in different shades of yellow. The ranges that we'll be using for some ranges are in different shades of green. Let's work on call duration first. If Doug Johnson is the name in the drop-down list, then my goal is to show the total call duration for Doug Johnson in January, then in February and March, and so on. I also only want to create my formula once in the January slot and then copy it down to the rest of the cells to save time. I'm going to go to the cell that I want to create my first sum ifs formula. I'll type equals sum ifs then opening parentheses, you'll notice that the first thing it asks for is the sum range, which is different from the original sum if formula, which asks for the criteria range first, so be careful there. I'm going to click on the year to date phone stats page and select all of column C as my sum range since I'm looking for the call duration, then a comma to get to the next rule in the formula. Now it's going to ask for my first criteria range. When I'm working with the sum ifs formula, I always like to work from the left to right to keep myself organized. So I'm going to pick the name column, which is column A, first, then add a comma to get to the next argument. It's asking for the actual criteria it should be looking for in the name column. That's where I want to go back to the year to date sheet and pick the name from the drop down list, then a comma to get to the next argument, which is asking for the second criteria range. Since I'm looking to sum based on the month here in column B as well, I'm going to go back to the year to date phone stats and pick all of column B as the criterion range, then a comma. Now the criteria, which is back on the year-to-date page. I'm going to choose January, then a closing parenthesis to close out the formula and hit enter. There's our first value. Let's see if Doug Johnson actually had a call duration of 243 seconds in January. Yep, he did. Now let's change the name in the drop-down list to see if it follows the name. Alright, if you're going to create a formula for every one of these boxes, it would take forever. Let's work on dragging the formula down. First, I need to open the formula to see what arguments need to be absolute and which ones can change. Watch what happens to the formula when I drag it down. When I click between the two formulas, you can see that the only parts of the formula that change are the two criteria. The sum range and the criterion ranges stay the same. We want the month criteria to change as we drag the formula to the other months, so that part is okay. But we always want the name criteria to be pulled from B3. I can do that by clicking on the argument and pressing F4. Now, when I hit enter, I can drag the formula down and everything should work. Let's do one more phone metric to ensure you have the hang of the formula. We'll look at hold time per call. Equals sum ifs and opening parentheses. Choose the sum range, which is now all of column D, then comma to get to the next argument. Then choose the first criterion range, which is the name column and a comma to get to the next argument, which is the actual name in the drop-down. Now the next criterion range, which is all of column B on year-to-date phone stats. 
Now the criteria, which will be January. Sometimes the formula gets in the way of the cell you are trying to click on, so you just have to type out the cell. I haven't figured out a fix for that yet. Now let's change B3 to be absolute by pressing F4 so that when we drag the formula down, the name stays the same. Now we can drag the formula down. I'll just finish these last two off so I don't bore you to death. Now I'm just going to add an average to the year to date row and we'll be good to go. Let's check the drop down menu and see if the values changed properly. And that's how you use the SUMIFS formula in Excel. Obviously, you'll have to change a few things up as you work with your data. But the cool thing is, there is no limit to how many criterion ranges or criteria you are looking at. You're ready to go and have some fun working smarter, not harder. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.